So, here we are at the Australian Botanical Gardens in Mount Annan. My name is Mark Temple and I'm an academic from Western Sydney University. So as you know, I've been running an exhibition here called The Art and Science of Myrtle Rust. And we're using various multimedia to talk about myrtle rust and, and the, the dev devastating effects it's having on Australian native plants. And in this short video, I'm going to talk to you about sonification, which is the use of audio for data analysis. So in my work as a molecular biologist, I've been looking at DNA sequences. And rather than using visual um, inspection of sequence, I've been using audio inspection. So using our ears rather than our eyes to look at the data or to hear or perceive the data. So here's an example of what I've been doing. Now at the bottom here is the DNA sequence of myrtle rust. And in the cell, these pr large proteins, they bind to the DNA sequence and they read along it like a train running down a track. Now in the cell, when the DNA is processed, it produces proteins. And I'm showing here a, an example of a protein being made. And you can see that the protein is a string of these things called amino acids. And when I do the sonification, I make strings, but not of amino acids, of musical notes. And it sounds something like this. So you can hear this pulsing, these pulsing patterns. And what I'm doing, I'm looking at nucleotides and there were four types of nucleotides and I convert each nucleotide into a note so there are four notes and then I look at the dinucleotides and there's um, these come in pairs so four times four there were 16 different pairs so I get 16 notes and then I look at things such as what we call the GC content or the GC ratio and as that changes slowly over time I um, sonify that to individual notes, but these notes aren't pulsing like these ones. These are much slower, um, more paddy sounding, like in that, like a synthesizer, soft sounds. And then I've got the different reading frames. So there are three different reading frames, and um, in this example here, the nucleotides are coding for an amino acid called arginine, and I map that to an a musical note. So if I play it here. You can see that I can listen just to the individual nucleotides or listen to the, the GC content or listen to one of the reading frames or everything. So that's the use of audio in a science context. But what I've also been doing, and I think it's really interesting in terms of outreach, is taking this sonified audio out of the science laboratory into a rehearsal studio. And it starts to look a little more like this once we go into the studio. And in this instance, I've taken a very similar sequence, but I've mapped it to different instruments. So what we see on the screen here is some music production software. And I've taken the sonified audio from the Myrtle Rust genome and I put it into this program. So if you look on the top track here, you can see there are four rows of data because there are four bases in the DNA sequence and each base gives rise to an individual note. So that's a version of the sequence but now shown in musical notes. Okay, this is the um, looking at pairs of notes, so there's a range of 16 notes because four bases times four is 16, so there's 16 types there. Um, here's the GC content which changes slowly over time, so you can see you get these long, longer notes which um, are less pulsating than these short notes. And then here are the three reading frames, so there's um, a, a bunch of amino acids here for a small peptide in reading frame three, reading frame two, and there's something here in reading frame one. So these play um, 
in, in synchrony with these tracks. So basically, I've got a, a range of tracks here which we, we can play. So it sounds something like this. So once I've got the remapped science data in an audio context, so once I've got the science data sounding nicer in, in, in the recording studio, I can then play drums to the audio. And that sounds something like this. <laughs> 